Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise to War video I'm going to show you a guide about Su Nint. She is among the best evil side commanders and maybe she is even the best evil side commander. If you have watched my evil side tier list, you know that I have ranked her very high and in this video you're going to see why. So let's get started. Su Nint's typing is leader which fits her totally fine she is boosting her army anyway. In regards to her attributes, you can clearly see that she's heavy on focus and that fits her totally fine since she has a skill that is scaling with focus. And that skill is increasing the damage of her army in the first three rounds. So this is the reason why you would like to have focus as high as possible. Second important attribute is might. You want to push might and focus as high as possible. Focus will give you more burst damage for the first three rounds, while Might will give you overall more damage in the 10 rounds. And last but not least, you have Speed. Well, it's not really that important, but we don't say no to Speed if we can get any. This is my gear. Gigantic Hammer with Rend, Scale May with Melee Vigor, Hunter's Guide with Aegis and Wizards Fireworks with Hunter's Mark. Now let's jump over to the skills and see what's going on with Sunin. At respect level 0, to the bottom we have Heradric Tactics. Now this is boosting the damage of your Orc units by a certain percentage for each allied evil man unit in your army. That is kinda cool because we want to have two evil man units anyway just to boost the damage of our Mongul Arbalets. Once you have Max's skill out, you also receive for your evil man plus two attack and for your orcs plus one attack. And then we also have Faint over here. For each five instances of damage your commander deals, all of your units next attack gets a damage increase by a certain percentage. This too will become important later, but this skill doesn't have that much priority in comparison to Heradric Tactics, Inspiration and Dagolet Tactics. So let me continue. Inspiration. Now this too, alongside Heradric Tactics, is one of your core skills. This is making Sunin so strong. For the first three rounds, all of your allies units are going to get a damage increase by a certain percentage. And this is also scaling with focus, which is why you want to have as much focus as possible to increase your burst damage in the three rounds. So remember, Heradric Tactics and Inspiration, so far they are your core skill. Another core skill would be Daggerlet Tactics. It says, Evil Man, damage received minus a certain percentage for each allied orcs unit type in your army. So this too is very nice because we are going to have one orc unit being our Morgul Arbalest and they will, when you max this skill out, give your evil man troops minus 50% damage received. And this is flat damage mitigation. It counts against physical as well as against elemental damage. And when you have max a skill out, your evil man get a plus 10 defense boost and your orcs as well. So this is your third core ability. Then we have Whiplash. This isn't really a core ability but still nice to have. On every other round one of your allied units gets a certain percentage damage increase and you also deal a bit of damage against themselves but not a lot. Like you deal to your own units just 30% damage and then they get a certain percentage damage increase. This skill shines more the less units you have. I think it shines the most with just one unit but that would disrupt your group composition so we don't have it to get max value out of it we just have it to have a bit more damage with it then we have defensive stance this has a two round cooldown timer which means every three rounds it's going to kick in then it's going to deal physical damage to one enemy target and also make it so that one of your allied units receive a certain percentage less damage and this skates with might. Like this too is nice to have but we have much more important skills we need to max out first. Like Dagolet Tactics, Heradric Tactics and Inspiration need to be maxed out first and then I would go over to Faint and only then I would consider going over to Whiplash and Defensive Stance. At Respect 3 we have Panther Leader. Now this isn't as viable as her Respect Zero Tree 
But in some cases where you need to cancel a lot of healing, let's say against the Gandalf the Grey who has specialized in healing, or let's say against the Retaliate Balin. Now with this you can just shut down all of that self-sustain because this is giving her army a 30% chance to deal a certain percentage poison damage when you have beasts in your army. Like at least one unit type that is from the category beast and it also nullifies incoming healing for one round. So this is elemental damage as well as healing nullification and it also gives your beast an HP boost by 5% when you maxed it out. Now this can go well with Morgul Arbalest and Great Beasts and then you of course need one evil man unit as your third unit in that army. To the top we have Espionage, every three rounds it's going to kick in. The text states the following, against enemy unit with the highest attack deals the lowest possible damage. So this is kind of nice to mitigate damage. Every three rounds you ensure that the enemy with the highest attack deals minimum damage. And that alone is already worth it to spend one point into it. And it also has another effect which says against enemy unit with the highest defense, that defense is going to be reduced by a certain point for two rounds. So you are okay by putting one point into this. To the bottom we have Great Bash. Now this is activated every four rounds and what's going to do is three targets will get inflicted with a bleeding effect and that is going to deal a certain percentage damage over the next two rounds. Not that great but you can put one point into it just to have faint kick in faster. And then we have Sunland Tactics at Respect 5. This too is a great ability. It says activates different effects based on the amount of allied unit types present. If you have two unit types in your army that means you get a 25% chance to deal a certain percentage additional physical damage after your allied units have attacked. I'm not so sure about that since Sunint is going to run a three unit army anyway, which means you will receive the following effect. When you have three unit types present in your army, on each round all allies have a 25% chance to recover a certain percentage HP. And I do like this a lot. This means that Sunint will receive self sustain. And when you have maxed it out, she also gets plus 20 focus, which means even more burst damage for your inspiration skill over here. Speaking of more damage, at the top we have Quicksand. Against two enemy units, damage received increased by a certain percentage. And also, you get a 10% chance to inflict stun on each round. This too is very great. So up until now I thought that her respect zero skill was already strong but she can get even stronger with her respect five title and this skill quicksand. Then to the bottom we have reserves. Now this is also providing you more self-sustain because it says allied units recovers a certain percentage HP for the first five instances of damage taken. And this ladies and gentlemen is what is making Sunin so strong. She is already very strong at respect zero. She can specialize in dealing more elemental damage at respect three and also cancel healing. But she is the strongest once she also unlocks her respect five title with quicksand and also receives self-sustain. Let's get started with the skill order. So here is how I would skill my Sunint if I had her at respect level 0. I would go to my core talent which would be Heretic Tactics, two points over here, and then put one point into Inspiration. This too is a core talent enabling our burst damage and then I would just go back and forth between these two skills until I have maxed them both out. Let me speed this up. From here on onwards, I would go to Dagala Tactics, max this out immediately. Don't do anything going back and forth. That's not needed right now. Just max this out. And from here on, I would put one point into Whiplash just to have one more active skill to trigger Faint. And how does Faint kick in? For each normal attack, that counts as one source of commander damage. And you need five sources of commander damage to that faint kick in. So, auto attacks, 
Active skills. This too is an active skill. Put one point into this. And by doing so, you have done everything in your might to have faint kick in as fast as possible in battle. And from here on, we are ready to put everything we have into faint. And then, as you see, we still have some points left. I would put whatever I have from here on into Whiplash, since Whiplash is going to be activated much faster than Defensive Stance. Every other round, this is going to be activated. And then I would put any remaining points into Defensive Stance. And there you go. This is your Respect Zero Sunint. At Respect Level 3, this is how I would be skilling my Sunint. Again, we need our core skills like Heretic Tactics and also Inspiration. So make sure these two are maxed out, go back and forth between those. And then I would be jumping over to a Panther Leader, max it out immediately. Go back to Daggerlord Tactics, max it out. And then spend one point into Whiplash, one point into Defensive Stance to have more instances of damage to trigger Feint. And I would max out Feint immediately after that. If you have any more points left, spend them into Feint, max it out. If you still have some points left, put one point into Espionage, one into Great Bash, and the rest you can just invest into Whiplash. And if you still have remaining points, how about Defensive Stance? I don't believe that her Respect 3 build is stronger than her Respect 0 or 5 build. But yeah, this is how I would be building her. At Respect 5, I would be building her like this. Roderick Tactics, again, with Inspiration together. That is a must. Go back and forth between these two skills. And then I would go over to her Respect 5 title. Well, since I haven't unlocked her Respect 5 yet, I just have to explain it to you. I would put two points into Sunland Tactics, one point into Quicksand, and go back and forth between these two skills until both are maxed out. Then I would come back to Reserves, max this out, by that point, I think we have only 7 points left. I am at respect level 4 with Sunint, but I assume I will have only 7 points left. And then I would just spend everything into Daggerlet Tactics and try to max this out with any point I have remaining. Alright, let's summarize the strength of Sunint. So her first strength is definitely that she is a strong army damage booster. Heraldic Tactics is boosting the damage of her Mogul Arborless by a lot. That is her first strength. Her second strength would be strong burst damage because of this very skill, Inspiration. And this is also scaling with focus. Her third strength is that she's also providing strong damage mitigation for her evil man units with Dagala Tactics. This counts against physical and elemental damage. Her fourth strength is if you need anti-healing, she can provide that with Panther Leader. And her last strength is self-sustain with her Respect 5 title and also the Respect 5 skill to the bottom. Let's also summarize her weaknesses. Her first weakness would be mitigating incoming burst damage. Like this is her burst damage, but that can be mitigated to name you a few possibilities, White Council, Mifrandir, Great King from Isildur, or even his respect, the five title from Isildur, that is too, very effective against Sunind, and also from Mouth of Sauron, the skill Harbinger of Darkness. All of those skills aim towards mitigating burst damage. Second weakness, well, Sunint is going to run a three-unit army. That means she is kind of vulnerable against stun and army madness. As you see, she doesn't have pursuit, which is why you need to provide that with an item. And then you can say goodbye to that weakness. Her fourth weakness would be elemental damage. As you see, she has nothing that is mitigating elemental damage. So good side can already throw in some oath breakers or keepers they deal focus damage and that will come in handy against Sunint. Her last weakness is kind of a funny one it is very specific it is Aomir's respect 10 item why am I saying this well his respect 10 item is prioritizing ranged units first so how is Sunint supposed to deal damage when her ranged units are getting attacked on each round? This is why you need to be careful against Eomirs. But I have heard even then Sunint is doing kinda okay against him. 
but I have to see for myself. All right, it's time to have a look at our purple gear. I have listed the best in slot options over here. Feel free to equip anything else which you think makes sense, but this, in my opinion, is the best in slot in regards to purple gear. As a weapon, it's going to be the Mirkwood Bow, lots of might and speed, and also plus attack for her ranged units, and also ranged might as a special attack. This is just perfect to boost her main source of damage, which is going to be her more ghoul Arbaleth. And then we have the scale mail. This has also focus. Because of that very reason, might and focus is going to increase her burst damage. Army defenses for your melee units is also a nice to have side effect. I mean, why not? So our evil man can stay longer in the fight. And also melee vigor, just to, you know, further increase the survivability of your melee unit. And as a headpiece, I've decided to go with the Trapper's Hood. It has focus on it, like focus is going to increase our burst damage even further. Commander speed, well, that's not that important, but still it's okay. But above all, it has plus attack for our ranged units. And this is why I want this as my best in slot headpiece. In addition, it has hysteria. You know, just to cause some chaos with some CC. It never hurts to have CC. And our last choice is going to be the Wizard's Fireworks. This is going to get rid of one of our biggest weaknesses, being Evade. Evil Man can equip this, and I'm grateful that Sunint is Evil Man. She is capable of equipping this. It has lots of focus, which means your burst damage is going to increase even more, and plus attack for your ranged units again. But that gear can be topped with these options over here in regards to Golden Gear. The gigantic hammer is by far the best weapon she can equip. It has lots of might and plus 6 attack while also ignoring a certain percentage of the enemy's defensive. As our armor piece I have decided to go with the ranger shroud. This has lots of might. Alright it has commander speed which isn't that important for us but it has plus attack. Like one of the few chess pieces in the game that gives Plus attack for your ranged units. That is what she wants. And as a bonus effect, we have resistance. This is covering a bit of her weaknesses, like elemental damage. Burn, poison and focus damage received minus a certain percentage. If you have maxed it out, minus 30%. As soon as headpiece, I would go with Hunter's Guide. This has all the stats she needs, like might for her flat damage increase or focus for her burst damage increase and also plus attack for her ranged units, like steady damage overall. As a special effect, you want to have Aegis just to cover one of her biggest weaknesses being army CC, like stun, army stun or army madness. You don't want to burst your own units when you get inflicted with madness. This will cover that weakness. And as our accessory, we do have two choices over here, but I think going with the penalty of Orphan is kind of a waste. Instead, I would focus on Signet of the Barrows. This has lots of focus for your burst damage and HP for your evil man as well as orcs and also plus speed for those two unit types as well. But above all, the reason why I consider the Signet of the Barrows her best in slot legendary gear option is because it has Blitz. Blitz will give you initiative for the first four rounds. Your commander and your units both gain initiative. Morgul Arborless and let's say Halberdiers are very slow. But with this, you get to hit first. And this will help you snowball. Snowballing is also very important in this game. It is a mechanic that shouldn't be underestimated. But if you still don't have a Signet of the Barrows with Blitz, you can make do with the Palanty of Orphank and Tactical Mark. This too has lots of focus, even more focus than the Signet of the Barrows and it's also covering your weakness against Evade while giving plus attack for all of your units, not just only your Morgul Arbalest. But it is kind of a hard investment, right, to get the Palantir of Orphan with Tactical Mark. Maybe it is much easier to get the Wizard's Fireworks with Hunter's Mark. It is almost similar in what it is doing for Sunin. Is Sunin's Respect 10 item worth investing into it? Well, at first glance, it looks very nice. Really, I am tempted to invest into it. 
But what does this do? Let's first summarize what it does. It's giving your commander plus focus, which is great. That means we are going to deal more burst damage. Also plus attack for orcs and beasts and HP for your evil man. So I'm not against this. These, these stats are amazing. And this is topped by the special effect comprehensive tactics. Allied orcs, physical damage dealt plus a certain percentage, while evil men are receiving less physical damage. And also when you have beasts in your army, you are going to deal more poison damage. Like all of your allies within your army are going to deal a certain percentage more poison damage. Overall, that sounds great. And I'm not sure if this item is her best in slot option. Like, is there any high respect level Sunin player out there who has already max refined this and compared to the signet of the barrows with blitz max refined like it's coming down this trinket versus this this trinket which one is better let me know in the comment section all right it's time to have a look at sunin's troop composition and we do have a formula over here in regards to sunin's respect zero and respect five build you want to have one orc unit and two evil man units in your army and ideally your Morgul Arbalets are going to cover your orc unit and then you want to complement this with around 25% dragoons and halberdiers but instead of halberdiers you could also go with let's say 25% fallen that too is a possibility like the formula stands the same don't change your Mogul Arbalests, always have them in your background. And as your evil man units, you can be creative. Like, whatever you need on the battlefield, you can just fill those in. Instead of Dragoons, maybe Halberdiers, or maybe Runes T4 units, or maybe some Half Trolls. So this is totally up to you. But if you are playing Su Nint in her respect 3 build, your army composition is going to change. Instead of having let's say two evil man units, you want to have one beast unit in your army. So it could be fell beasts, you know, like the same, um, around 25 percentage beast units, or instead of fell beasts, you could also include great beasts into your army comp. Great beasts are going to increase the damage of your Morgul Arbalest while also protecting them. So fell beasts or great beasts it is, and you are good to go. It's time for some battle reports. So here I am fighting a good Galariel player. Let's check out my gear. Like in the intro, nothing has changed. This is my gear. It is the exact same gear with this build. And here I am fighting a strong Galariel player with this gear. Heavy focus damage, golden skin with contemplate, honor cask with man vigor, fine smoking pipe. And this is her build. Overall, a great Galariel. This is our snapshot. Let's have a look in the detailed view. So we have done almost 330k damage versus 130k damage of Galadriel. And as you see, our Morgul Arbalests have done the main job over here. Lots of damage, almost 300k. Another Galadriel fight, but this time instead of having Guards of the Tower, she's going with Dunedains, since Dunedains are a direct counter to Morgul Arbalests. And this is the outcome. My gear hasn't changed, it is the same. Galariel has the same gear. And this is the detailed view. We have done 245k damage while Galariel has done 211. So that is a big jump for her. And as you see, our Morgul Arbalests have taken a big hit, which naturally means they are going to deal less damage. Here we have a fight against a Dwalin player. My gear hasn't changed, it is exactly the same. Dwalin has this gear. Battle Axe with Concussion, Quilted Armor with Focus Protection, Full Helm with Melee Vigor, and if Lane with Mend. This is his skill, and this is the outcome. Let's have a look at the detailed page. We have done almost 340k damage versus 170k damage. Here is the detailed view. Morgul Arbalest doing a lot of work. Another fight against the same Dwalin but different troop composition. This time he has a full stack of Ram Riders. The gear stays the same, the build stays the same. This is the outcome. This is our damage. 350k again versus 140k damage. 
And yeah, we are getting closer to the 300k damage mark of the Mogul RLS. Now let this be my last Dwalin report. He has a different unit composition. Erebor's T4 Iron Warriors. Here is our detailed view with 331k damage versus almost 160k damage. In our detailed view, we see that Morgul Arbalets still haven't reached 300k damage. Here we have a report against a King of Man, Aragorn, tier 3. This is his gear. Dawn with lethal weapon. Warborn Battleplate with strength from dexterity. Cask of Submerge style with determination and Android Calabash with Wound Treatment. Like this is a very good King of Man player, yeah. And this is the outcome. Sunint has almost done 400k damage while receiving only 200k. And here we see we are getting closer to the 300k damage with our Mogul Arbalest. And here we have a Gil-Galad fight. Now you could argue that he should have a third elven unit in this army that could be bow knights or let's say lothlorians t4 units march wardens and i would totally agree with you that would be more effective and also like his respect 5 title is missing over here he isn't in his best states his gear could be a bit better of course but the point i'm trying to prove over here is that the outcome of this fight isn't going to change by a lot we have our Pursuit, which is a hardcore counter against Gil Galad. And we have all the damage we need to counter this. And even a best in shape Gil Galad won't be safe from soon end. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any other Gil Galad players in the time frame I had, which is why I have to show you this as an example. So here is a detailed view. Almost 260k damage against Gil Galad, while he has done only 120k damage. Our Morgul Arbales weren't able to deal as much damage as in comparison to the other reports we had so far. Here I am fighting a very strong Retaliate Balin player. And this guy has done everything right. He has decoys in his army with evade and a main tanky unit. And his gear is amazing. Matic of the Iron Hills with Retaliate. This is best in slot option for him. Durance Plate. Full Helm and the Hith Lane. And also lots of respect to fill all the skills he needs to make this viable. But remember in my Balin guide when I said one of his biggest weaknesses is a melee ranged army composition being more heavy with ranged units. Sunint is a direct counter to Balin. And here is the detailed view. Almost 400k damage done versus only 140k damage received. Our Morgul Arbales went crazy and have cracked the 300k damage mark. Here I am fighting against a Gand of the Grey player, also great gear, Carver with Man Strength, Quilted Armor with Focus Protection, Hunter's Guide with Discord, Wizards Fireworks. As you see, his build makes sense. This is Gandalf's meta build. I respect level Gandalf for sure. And yeah, this is the outcome. This is what Sunint is capable of. Here we have the detailed view, damage done. We have done around 250k versus Gandalf while receiving 180k damage. All right, our Mogul Arbalest couldn't even crack the 200k damage mark, but it is still a win for Sunint. Here is a fight against Aomir. Let's check out her gear. Cutlass with melee might. Scout's Mail with Shroud, Horseman's Helm with Resolve, and her Respect 10 item, which is kinda a good choice against ranged army compositions. So this is a direct counter against my army composition. I think if she had max refined this, she would have been in a position where she could be an actual threat against me. But yeah, good choice against Sunin, this Respect item. And as you see, this is a high respect level Eowyn. This makes a lot of sense. But still, this is the outcome. In our view, we see that Sunint has done 370k damage versus 130k damage. Our Arbalest have done 330k damage. Here we are fighting Boromir. Let's check out his gear. Cut us with melee might. Scale made with Gallant. 
Cask of Pride with melee suppression. And Horn of Gondor. A good respect 10 item. Like, I really like this item. He has high respect level for his Boromir. His army composition makes sense. But still, this is the outcome. Here we have the detailed view. Around 340k damage versus 130k damage received. Morgul Arbalest, 270k damage done. Now let this be my last report. I am fighting against a strong Theoden player. Let's check out his gear. He has the Reach of the Riddermark equipped. That is a good weapon, especially with Might of Cavalry. And then Scout's Mail with Deftness. Horseman's Helm with Resolve. If lane with Mend. Alright, this is a good geared and good skilled Theoden. But this is the outcome. We have done 460k damage. Wow, that is a lot. And we have received 184k damage. Here you see Morgul Arbalest once more above 300k damage. So as you see guys, Sunant is very competitive. There is a reason why I have ranked her at the top of the foot chain in my evil side tier list. And yeah, the reports are speaking for themselves. If you want a strong commander, I can recommend get yourself a Sunint. You won't regret it. There are only a few options that can counter her, such as Isildur being the strongest counter against her, or Gandalf the Grey who is getting a decent draw if you have the right troop composition. But yeah, Sunint is totally worth playing. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.